Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair and restore. I located this one at a local flea market antique store, and it is a General Electric Telecron mantle clock. On the front, it just says General Electric, but there's a plate on the back, which reads Telecron. And I looked up the history on this particular clock. It, the model is the Geneva. They were manufactured in 1930 and 1931. The 1930 model has General Electric and Telecron written on the front. The 1931 model dropped the word Telecron from the front. General Electric bought out the Warren Telecron company. Uh, in the early years, it just said Telecron on the dial. Once General Electric uh, bought them out, they added their name to the front, and for a while they would clocks to say General Electric and Telecron. And eventually, GE dropped Telecron from the uh, from front dial. This clock is a non-working one, obviously, because there's no power cord. And I'll know once it's opened up if there are issues with the rotor. The case is in very bad shape. There's gouges in it, scratches. And if I can restore the mechanism and get it running, I'm leaning towards actually sanding the finish off of this one and trying to just restain it and to see how it comes out that way. I was able to locate this clock in my Telecron book. And I'll show you. Uh, again, 1930 and 31. And what I realized in seeing this is that it's two tones on the finish. This is actually, I believe, a, a veneered piece of wood that was applied to the front of it, two different colors. And you can see that is here, whether I can restore it to two different shades. Uh, I don't know yet because I can't really remove this. Uh, another interesting thing I noted is that on the back of most of the clocks you see, you have your knob here to turn to set the time. This one, the plate, instead of being permanently attached, is a little hinge and you can slide it up. And the set knob is inside you. Turn that to adjust your time. Anyway, what I'm going to do first is figure out how best and easy to take the whole mechanism out from the case and we'll proceed from there. There we go. What I'm seeing when I look inside are three screws. Hard to see but there are nuts on two of them. One of the screws is missing a nut. And I believe once I remove those, the whole mechanism should just slide out of the front of the case. So I'll undo those and then I'll come back. I've removed the two nuts and we'll see if I can slide the whole thing out now. There we go. And here we have a wire nut from when there used to be a power cord. I don't know if there's another one in here. Nope. The wire looks nicely intact from the coil. The rim is secured to a back plate here. Some tabs are bent over the edges, so I have to undo those first. Remove the dial, the glass, and then the hands. So we're going to do that first and then we'll come back. But before I do that, let me attach a, a new power cord here and see if it actually runs. So let me set that up and then I'll come back. I've attached the power cord. Let me plug it in. And see if it's running. And it is. How about that? A clock that is, let's see, 91 years old, still working. However, I still plan on opening the whole thing up and trying to clean and lubricate the gears that are in here. I'm sure that uh, it can only help make it last a lot longer. So I'll remove the power cord and work on getting the rim off from the face. I've pried up most of the tabs, I'll do the last couple. Let me just get a little closer for us so we can see it. 
And depending on the size of these tabs, you can either pry them up with a screwdriver or a needle nose plier can grab them and get them up that way. And let's see if it'll pop off easily. Here we go. We have the glass. I don't need a good cleaning. And the rim. I'll be able to clean and polish. The next step is going to be to remove the hands. I just need to take a closer look to see if the minute hand is threaded on here or if it's held on tight with just sort of a friction grip before I try to remove anything. So let me take a look at this and once I know what we're doing, I will come back. The second hand is on with a friction grip and it's very snug. So I'm going to apply some WD-40 to it, give it about 10 minutes and then try to remove it. Just brush a little bit around the stem. Okay, we'll give that 10 minutes or so, and then we'll come back. It's been soaking a good 10 minutes, and I'll see if I can just kind of tease off the second hand here. It's starting to move a little. And this is a tight one. Got it. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and lubricate the stems for the minute and hour hand. I'm just going to assume they're on real tight as well, and then I'll come back. It's been about another 10 minutes, and now I'll try to remove the minute hand. Oh, very good. That came right off. Let's see if we get lucky with the hour hand but to protect the dial from scratching, I'll slip a piece of cardboard under here. This is really tight. I'm gonna re-lubricate it. I might even use a little uh, liquid wrench instead of WD-40. And so let me do that, and then we'll come back when I'm ready to try again. It's been another 10 minutes or so, and we'll give it another go. Oh, look at that. Popped right off. Very good. Now the dial should come out. Okay, next I want to access the gears in here and it looks like we have some riveted screws on the front of the plate and I'm seeing nuts on the back screws so we'll undo these three and that should get the whole thing off. Uh, I also may elect to remove the rotor but let's let's try for this first. I'll undo these and we'll come back. I've removed two of the three nuts. I'll take off the third one. And I think the best way to remove this is this way, lifting the plate out so the gears hopefully will not get disturbed from the position that they're in.
here we go. That's not too bad at all. A nice simple design. And what I like to do now, and what I recommend anytime you try to restore a clock, I'll start to take photos of this. And as I remove each gear, I'll take a photo so I have a good record of the position that they're supposed to go back together in. So let me start on that. And once I have that done, we'll come back. One thing I have to do though before taking off the gears is the gear that can, is part of the uh, set knob, which is back here to set the time. I have to remove this knob on the back in order to slide this whole stem and gear out of here. So I'm going to take this off first. To do it, you have to grab hold of the stem with a vice grip. And just unwind the nut uh, with, with the pliers. Okay. Okay, now this gear fell off first, it goes here. But now I can begin removing them and taking photos as I go, as I mentioned. First, I have to move this out of the way. This is the power interruption indicator. It's on a stem that has a little clip here, which acts to prevent it from turning too far either direction. You don't need to remove the clip, you just have to lift this up till the stem frees from the back plate. And that gives you the height to keep it out of the way. And first we remove this gear. Then the gear that's part of the uh, set knob. The gear in the center. And this last one is riveted to the, to the back plate here. So I'm really unable to remove it. What I will do is clean this up along with the center gear here, which is actually connected to the rotor over here. But that's in pretty good shape. I don't have to open that. And the next step is going to be just clean up all these gears and then look to reassemble it. This central gear that comes out of the rotor, this turns at one RPM, one revolution per minute. And that's what's giving you your second hand making one minute sweeps. Anyway, let me clean up everything and then I'll look to put everything back together. I've cleaned up the three gears. This is really a very simple design and looking more closely at it, I am seeing a lot of sort of dirt and oil buildup around and underneath the rotor here. So I think to really clean everything up completely, I'm going to re remove this whole portion from the plate. I just have to undo these two screws, I believe, to get the whole thing off. So. Let me do that next. There's one. So this plate comes off. And here we go. You can see just how gunked up that is in there. So I'll clean all of this off. Clean the inside of the plate here. And then we'll come back once that's all taken care of. I've cleaned up the rotor. I've also lubricated the gear with some synthetic clock oil. I've done the same to the other gears. This plate's cleaned up. And now I'm just gonna reassemble everything.
Next, I'll be putting these gears back onto the plate. That one, the uh, set knob here. Okay, what I want to do next is reattach the set knob. And the next step is going to be reattaching this plate over the gears. Okay, this goes like that. We're in. Now I have to attach the three nuts on the back here. I'll do that and then come back. Okay, this is secured. The next step would be to seat the dial, the hands, the glass, and the rim. But when I was cleaning up the hands, I noticed that I guess some of this 90 year old paint appears to be on here and it flaked and kind of scraped off very easily um, on both the uh, minute hand and the hour hand. The second hand, it looked as if it was covered in some kind of a varnish. It's hard to see, but that seemed to be scraping off as well. I'm going to see if I can clean all of it off. If it's brass underneath it, I might be able to polish it up. If not, I may just try to spray paint it. I'm also going to repaint the, these hands as well. So let me get to work on that. I should also mention that I already cleaned the dial, polished the rim, and cleaned the glass. So when I come back, I'll be ready to put the dial with the hands, all that back onto here. I was able to clean up and polish the second hand. It came out rather nice, as well as paint the hour and minute hand. And now we'll put everything back. Start with the dial. And first the hour hand, and to synchronize it, you want to put this on the 12. And then follow that up with the minute hand. And last, the second hand. Next, I position the glass over it, the brass rim. And then I have to bend the tabs back on the other side of the plate to get it to stay. So I'll do that and then come back. Everything is back together. And what I want to do is reattach a power cord here just to check one more time that it is still running. So let me hook up the uh, cord and we'll come back. The power cord is attached and it's plugged in. I'll turn it on. And it's still running. So I can put this aside for the time being and get to work on restoring the case, I have to decide which way I want to go with it. I pretty much have three options when it comes to trying to restore the case. Uh, one is to go over the whole thing with uh, Howard's Restore Finish, but this is so beat up looking, so scratched and gouged that I don't think it would improve it all that much. The second option is to strip it with sandpaper. And this is such a large piece that it would be an awful lot of work also difficult because there's so many carvings and edges to it. It's tough to, plus you have this veneered piece on top. Uh, it's, it'd be difficult with sandpaper. The third option is to just strip it with something like this, citrus strip. It's uh, supposed to remove both paint and varnish as well as uh, wood stain. So what I think I'm gonna do is test it. I'll put some of that 
on the back here and let it sit overnight and see if it strips a small area clean enough to warrant doing the entire piece with that. So I'll do that and we'll see what we have uh, come morning. I've applied a little bit to a small area here and as I said we'll just let that sit overnight and see how much of it scrapes off come morning. As you can see, I have completed the restoration on the case. I ended up not using the uh, paint stripper. I wasn't happy with how it came out on the back. And instead, I just sanded it down by hand. And then I used a light oak stain on it. Uh, and apparently, because there's different types of wood putting this thing together, it picked up the stain in different degrees. It's much darker down here. And this here and this piece of veneered wood in front is even lighter. Uh, once it was stained, I then gave it several coats of polyurethane and I think it's looking pretty good. I also did the back and the plate on the back was kind of scratched up so I painted that as well. And then what I'm going to do next is insert the clock mechanism back into the case, attach the new power cord and that should pretty much complete it. This is the before. And this is the after. Here is the finished product up and running. I spent considerably more time restoring the clock case than I did the clock mechanism. And I think it's a considerable improvement over how it was looking at the beginning. That's about it. The General Electric Telecron Geneva, which is from 1931. We're looking at a 91-year-old clock. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out some of my others. And again, that wraps it up. Bye for now.